Good evening. It is Wednesday evening. We've made it halfway through the week. It's nine o'clock. I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Weather Impact Team, and we are now officially into that wetter pattern as we started off this morning with the uh, rain that was around and that rain lingered for a while. It was generally light rain and we picked up about a quarter of an inch of rain in the Atlanta area. Some folks picked up a little less, others picked up a little bit more than that, uh, but that moved through during the morning hours and then some some of it tapered into the early afternoon, especially over on the east side before it moved out. Then we had a good coverage of clouds throughout most of the day and we continue with the clouds now, but there are some spots, especially over in West Georgia, that are picking up just a couple of isolated showers. I'm going to uh, pinpoint that for you coming up here when we take a look at radar in just a moment. But first, here's what we're going to be watching going through the day on Thursday. You know, we're going to have a lot of dry hours during the day on Thursday. We're going to have some scattered showers here and there but it's not going to be raining all day. We'll have a lot of those dry hours with even some sunshine that's going to be breaking through the clouds at times, especially around lunchtime and into the early afternoon. Now what that sun is going to do is it's going to add to some heating and that heating will help to add some instability and we will already have some clouds around. We already have plenty of moisture around and that's just going to help some other showers and storms to develop during the day. And as some of those develop, it is possible that a few of those could turn strong. So it's not like a widespread severe weather day with showers and storms all day long. We'll have a lot of dry hours, but then when we see some of those showers and storms develop, even though they're not going to be widespread, it is possible for some of those to turn strong. So here is what we're watching out there right now. When you're taking a look at radar here, we have that good coverage of clouds around. You know, we had a couple showers on the south side a little bit earlier. Some of those were in parts of Coweta County, really just a small area with just a little bit of rain that was moving through. But now we've got a couple of showers over into parts of Carroll County and also into the uh, Cedartown area as well, where those showers, again, nothing particularly heavy and not really anything too large out there, but just kind of isolated with mainly light rain. There have been a couple of pockets of moderate rain mixing in with that, but not really here in the Atlanta area. We have mainly clouds here. And again, we had a couple of those in uh, parts of uh, Coweta County, southern Fulton County, and now we're keeping an eye on these in Carroll County, a couple of those in Polk and in Floyd County, but it's not really heavy at all. Just some light rain, maybe a little bit of moderate rain mixing in. When this system was over into Alabama, especially western Alabama, it was generating a little bit of thunder and lightning but any of that has weakened since it's moved in here. We don't have any lightning out of this. You can see over in Cleburne County there in Alabama, there are a couple showers there, mainly light, a couple of little moderate ones in there. These that were west of Gadsden are falling apart, and that's really going to be the trend through the rest of the overnight hours tonight. Just a couple of little spotty showers here and there, but nothing particularly strong or nothing really widespread either. The widespread rain is mainly down into the Gulf of Mexico. We were watching this at 5 and 6 o'clock when you know, we have some of these showers over New Orleans and southern Mississippi trying to move into the panhandle, but we talked about how the main energy would stay in the Gulf, and that's really what we're watching. But again, you can see some of that moisture streaming up into parts of Alabama with just a few of those spotty showers that we have around. Now, what we're going to be watching over the next couple of days, look up to the north. We've got this cutoff low here that's just hanging out in the middle of the country there in parts of Kansas, moving into areas of Missouri. And what that's doing, the flow around that is continuing to kind of circle around it this way and giving us a westerly and southwesterly flow that keeps us with this Gulf moisture that we're going to be dealing with off and on. And tomorrow, our temperatures are going to warm up a little bit more. So with a little bit of everything going on tomorrow, starting off with clouds, and then we're going to have some sunshine breaking through. That sun adds to the heating of the day but we still have plenty of moisture uh, in the atmosphere and at the surface. So when we get that heating, it's just going to make some of those clouds bubble up to give us a few showers and the potential for some storms to develop. And with that, even though we don't think it's going to be widespread, some of those could turn strong. Now tonight, 
We don't expect really any severe weather anywhere over the southeast. This lighter green color indicates just general showers and thunder showers, but not expecting anything to turn severe. But then look what happens tomorrow. You see a large area of green, which is a level one of five risk in those areas in the southeast. That's where we could see some isolated stronger storms developing. And Metro Atlanta is included in that level one risk. Again, nothing widespread, just a couple of isolated stronger storms. There is a level two risk up in parts of North Georgia, going up toward Greenville and into the mountains of North Carolina and into parts of eastern Tennessee. That's where we think the ingredients will be a little bit higher for the potential for some of those storms to, to develop that could be strong. The main impacts with that we think would be uh, some strong winds, pockets of heavy rain and hail. We're not overly concerned about a tornado risk with this type of system that we're watching out there. But as you know, at any time, you can see a little bit of rotation developing with those. But again, not a widespread tornado risk. The main thing will be some rain, wind and hail as the possibility for those storms. And that would mainly be later in the day Thursday, most likely into the evening hours on Thursday. Then on Friday, that severe weather threat, even though it's a low end severe weather threat, is a level one of five risk. That goes down into parts of central Georgia, east Georgia, south Georgia, along the Georgia coast there as well. We think on Friday, our rain chances are going to be lower, but they're not going to be at zero. We'll have about a 30% chance for any showers around. But we do think those would be just general showers and not anything that would turn severe. So here's a look at those main threats that we're talking about for Thursday. Again, mainly later in the day on Thursday here. Heavy rain would be moderate risk. The strong winds risk would also be moderate. Not concerned about a big time tornado risk with that. And then hail risk would be between low and moderate, we think, um, with some of those storms due to the colder air aloft and the rise that we're going to get out of some of those storms out there. We could see some hail uh, developing out of them. Take a look at the Almanac for today. We got up to 72 degrees for a high this afternoon. Our low was 60. That low this morning of 60 was just one degree above the average. We should be around 59 for this time of year. The average high for this time of year is 79. So yes, we were below average today with that high of 72 degrees. Also, take a look at the rainfall. We picked up about a quarter of an inch of rain officially at Hartsfield Jackson. As I mentioned earlier, some places got a little bit more. Some places got a little bit less, depending on if you lined up with maybe a few more of those moderate showers. But really, for the most part, these showers were generally light today, and depending on how long they stayed in your area, determine how much rain you got there. But as you can see, we do have that deficit still holding at around one and three quarters inches below where we should be in rainfall for the year. So here's what we're watching with the timing of these potential storms here during the day on Thursday. Generally, between 5 in the afternoon and 1 o'clock in the morning, that's when we're going to see the little better chance for some of those showers and storms to develop. And again, a couple of those could turn strong. Uh, with some thunder and lightning with them and again the potential for wind and hail with them so be sure to keep your plans flexible and just know that you're going to be going through a big part of the day tomorrow without any rain at all and a lot of times when that happens people think oh i thought it was going to rain but it's not raining yet so they put the umbrellas away and then all of a sudden one of those storms pops up so just be flexible during the day keep your umbrella with you Know that there may be times during the day when you'll have to be dealing with some of these scattered showers that uh, that'll be popping up. Now, I mentioned we got up to 72 for a high today. Right now, those temperatures have come down a little bit. Uh, 68 is our temperature in Atlanta right now. It is cooler up in Canton with the temperature of about 61 at this hour, 63 in Gainesville. We got some 50s in Blairsville and Clayton. It's a little milder down to the south of us. Temperature still holding in the lower 70s in parts of LaGrange, also in Noonan and into Thomaston uh, with those temperatures that are in the lower 70s. So here's what we're going to be watching during the day on Thursday. We're going to start off around 62 degrees, some clouds to start in the morning. There may be just a couple of isolated showers in the early morning hours tomorrow, but around lunchtime or getting closer to lunch and after lunch, we're going to see some sunshine breaking through those clouds and that is going to add to the heating of the day. When we see those temperatures up to 79 at one and then getting up to 82 for a high in the afternoon tomorrow, again in the afternoon, just a couple of spotty showers around, but we're really thinking it's going to be later in the evening hours when we see that better chance for a few more of those showers and potential storms to develop. So out there right now, we're just watching a few of those little spotty showers to the west of the city. A lot of that's going to fall apart through the nighttime hours. Early tomorrow morning, 
mainly dry in Atlanta northward. A few showers, though, possible there on the south side. And then as we go into the lunchtime hour, you're even seeing some of the clouds break up a little bit more to give us more of that sunshine. And with that sun, that adds to the heating. That adds to the instability uh, with that heating and that moisture that we have, where we can see a few of those uh, scattered showers blossoming in the afternoon. As you can see at 4.35 o'clock, not really a widespread coverage, just isolated stuff developing. But then going into the evening hours, this is when we're going to see maybe a little more energy with this coming into that warm, moist air here. Uh, and even though the sun will be setting at 8.30, we'll still have enough warmth and instability around 9, 10 o'clock. As some of these showers come in, some of those could be heavier. Those are the ones we're going to be watching for that potential for thunder and lightning and wind. And remember, we're thinking the ingredients in far north Georgia into South Carolina, North Carolina and eastern Tennessee. We might see a few of those storms that are going to be firing up just a little bit more. And then by Friday morning, mainly dry, we'll have a few clouds mixing in with the sunshine. But as we advance through the forecast track here through the day on Friday, I'm still going with a 30% chance for some showers with enough heating in the day to maybe make a few of those bubble up in the afternoon. But this model's not showing a lot of that, um, you know, not showing a lot of rain around. So we're going to hold on to the 30% chance for a shower. I know that the folks at UGA would love for this to happen uh, with not seeing any rain around because they are having graduation at Sanford Stadium on Friday night, a big outdoor event with a lot of people. Um, but we'll wait and see again with that heating in the afternoon and into the evening. We can see a few showers that'll be bubbling up. Then on Saturday, our rain chances start coming back up. This is early on Saturday morning. You can see more of these showers that are going to be moving in. Maybe not as many on the north side at 7 a.m. But then through the morning hours to around lunchtime, more of this moisture continues to lift into our direction. Now that's overriding an easterly flow there at the surface. And all of that together means it is going to be cooler on both Saturday and Sunday. High temperatures in some spots only in the upper 60s. For Atlanta, we're thinking it'll be in the lower 70s. So cooler air for the weekend, but also we're going to see more of this moisture feeding into that, giving us a better chance for showers here on both Saturday and on Sunday. It looks like it might be soggy off and on during the day. In fact, you can see the ups and downs with these percentages here. 40% chance for showers Thursday, 30% chance Friday, then up to 60% Saturday, then holding on to that 50% chance for showers both on Sunday and on Monday. We do see some light though at the end of the tunnel by next Wednesday. We should see some drier air that's going to be moving into our area. Now we've been talking over the past couple of days about how the models are not in agreement. They haven't been in agreement on the coverage of rain. They haven't been in agreement on the timing of rain and they have not been in agreement on the amount of rain. Look at this. The American model is showing potentially over the next five days, another two and a half inches possible here in Atlanta. Uh, and maybe up to three inches possible, Duluth, Covington, three and a half possibly. So both models are showing increased rain amounts over the next five days. But look what the European model is showing. It's showing the potential of five inches of rain in Atlanta, four and a half in Covington, more than four in Athens and Eatonton. Uh, so the European is showing a lot more rain. So it's our job as meteorologists to look at these models and use them as guidance. We compare the models. We compare which models sometimes are a little more correct in certain situations and which ones usually aren't correct. We look for trends there in the models as well. So this is what we're going to be watching. Just because I'm showing you this now, that doesn't mean that I really think there's going to be five inches of rain. This is just the data that's coming in that we use to help put our forecast together. Now, lows are going to be milder over the next couple of days due to the clouds and the rain chance. Cools off, though, on Sunday morning. And then our highs will be up and down, too. 82 for a high Thursday with more sun. And then for the weekend, cooler air with that east wind and more clouds around. Then back to 73 here uh, going into Monday. Here's the European model showing, again, this moisture feed still in here. Friday, lower rain chances. Saturday, you see more of this moisture feeding in. Sunday, still about a 50% chance for rain. Monday, still a 50% chance for rain. Tuesday, the rain chances come down a little bit to maybe like 40%. And then we think on Wednesday, 
This is still showing a little bit moving in, but we think that those rain chances will be down 20% or less here on Wednesday. So here's the seven day forecast and you can see those temperatures at 82 on Thursday, 40% chance for showers here on Thursday, 30% on Friday as that rain chance comes down just a little bit more and then heading into your weekend. That's when the rain chances are going to be higher. Once again, 60% Saturday, 50% on Sunday and Monday. And then as we head into your a Tuesday coming down a little bit to 40% and then Wednesday drying out just a little bit more with high temperatures back up into the lower 80s. Be sure to keep it with us right here on 11 Alive Plus and Weather Impact 24-7 as we love doing these extended weather discussions with you and a look at radar any time of the day 24-7.